Hi there, Smart Drivers, talking to you tonight about car care, what you need to do to your vehicle to get it ready for winter. And I do apologize, we had some <clears throat> issues with audio though there. So we're going to talk about <laughs> what we need to do to get our car ready. Check all the fluids underneath the hood, check your tires, put a coat of wax on it in preparation for winter time. And winter is indeed here. Tracy was in Calgary, sent me a photo this morning that there's... 10 centimeters of snow on the ground, six inches of snow on the ground, and it is minus 11 degrees Celsius, uh, about 23 degrees Fahrenheit. So excellent, so can hear me now, excellent. I do apologize, everybody's gotta move over to the new stream. The unfortunate part is, is that the old stream wouldn't let me just start it again. So I do apologize, uh, it's been some time since I've had to check the audio and I had to reset it. So thank you for bearing with me. Lots of people here, Elevator Fan, uh, Ant is traveling, and Rocky is tuning in from Windsor, Ontario. Rawson is here as well. So if you have any questions, we're gonna help you pass your driver's test first time. Be a uh, safer, smarter driver for veteran drivers and to uh, CDL drivers starting your career as a truck or bus driver. We're gonna help you with all of that. As well, uh, working on a video right now on how to hook up and unhook a semi-trailer from a tractor trailer, so that's gonna come up. As well, my friend Klaus is here from Germany. Hello, my friend. And uh, if you're tuning in, let us know where you're tuning in from and uh, we'll definitely help you out with your license and getting answers to any questions you might have about passing a driver's test. But tonight we're talking about winter driving. Most drivers are terrified of driving in the winter time and what they're going to encounter. The first thing that you wanna make sure is, is that your vehicle does not break down in the winter time and leaves you out on the highway stranded, okay? So you need to do certain checks and things that you can do to prevent it from breaking down. As well, we'll talk about winter survival kits to keep you going uh, in the winter time in case you do get stranded, in case you do get into an avalanche area or skid off the road in a, in a snowstorm or blizzard. Uh, those things do happen, but not all the time, but we'll definitely help you with that. Uh, Rawson is driving a pickup truck a challenge. Uh, Rawson, not mostly, not in this day and age, driving a pickup truck isn't a, isn't a big challenge because I don't even think that they make two wheel drive pickup trucks anymore. All pickup trucks are going to be four wheel drive. So driving a pickup truck in the wintertime really isn't gonna be that, that big of a deal. And Elevator Fan is saying that he is in Cleveland. Uh, taking off and landing on YouTube. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Eric is tuning in from Minnesota. Hello, my friend, Minneapolis, Minnesota there in the Midwest. So hello, everyone. And uh, just bear with me. Lots of, <laughs> the technical thing with the audio threw me off here because I should have checked that, of course, as part of my getting going here, but uh, unfortunately it got past me. So. Uh, yeah, winter driving, easy to do. You can do most of these checks yourself, uh, checking what's under the hood, uh, checking your tire pressure, making sure that your tires are, got enough tread on them for the winter time, make decisions about whether you're going to put winter tires on your vehicle or whether you're gonna stay with your all season tires for the winter time, especially if your all season tires are rated m s or they have the mountain snowflake symbol on them, then that will work out for you for the winter time. Uh, Wyatt's turning in from North Carolina, Western North Carolina. Hello, my friend. And Lightning, hello, my friend. <laughs> I have not heard from you for quite a while. It must be very early in the morning there in South Africa, my friend. Amir, yes, uh, visibility is very less. What are the safety measures as a driver I should take care of? Uh, Amir, Finding landmarks, keeping yourself a good safe distance from other road users on the roadway. So know that uh, when you're driving, that when it's raining, uh, in fog, snow, freezing rain, any of those adverse weather conditions, you have to look for landmarks along the roadway and identify where the road is going, maintain a good following distance, you know, three to six seconds from other vehicles in front of you. So that's what you need to do. And if you look at the night driving video here on the channel, all of the techniques and strategies in the night driving video will work for driving in inclement weather, whether it's fog, snow, rain, whatever, okay? So that will help you with all of that. 
Uh, Eric Snow Tires, when to put them on. Uh, Eric, it's a personal preference about when you put them on. I will tell you right now that I called a tire shop this morning to book for my mate uh, for his tires to go in and get changed over. It's a week out uh, for us to get into the shop. Now, if you're going to put winter tires on, it's a decision. It's a personal decision about when you're going to put your tires on your vehicle. For me personally, I wait until the first snowfall to put winter tires on my vehicle. I have winter tires for the buggy, uh, but like I said, I wait for the first snowfall and then I throw them on. Now, I don't have to wait for a tire shop because I've got the equipment in the garage and I go out and it takes me half an hour to take pull the tires off and put the new ones on. Again, we were talking about this last week in terms of snow tires being on another set of rims. I have another set of rims because when I bought the buggy, I didn't go out and buy the rims. Uh, they came with the buggy when I bought it secondhand. And this is another reason why I suggest to many of you that uh, you should buy a secondhand vehicle because these some of these things are already taken care of for you. If you go out and buy a brand new vehicle, then you gotta go out and buy another set of rims, you gotta buy a set of winter tires, uh, and you're running into another thousand, fifteen hundred dollars depending on what kind of vehicle you have. If you got a big F-150 or a Dodge Ram, it's gonna run you into the two thousand, twenty-five hundred dollar mark. If you got a small vehicle like mine, or you got a Toyota Corolla or a Honda CRV, or those types of things, uh, it's really only going to cost you 800 to a thousand dollars but if you buy a secondhand vehicle lots of times the, the winter tires come with them so that's another consideration for buying a secondhand vehicle uh, lightning very early indeed long time yes <laughs> I, I was actually a couple of weeks ago I was thinking about your lightning because I was thinking about all of those videos that I did uh, for during the pandemic and during the, the shutdown uh, I was going to pull them down and edit them and then put them back up just kind of as a history of things that had happened on the channel uh, over the course of, you know, over its course, over its lifetime. <laughs> so I was thinking about you the other day and wondering how you were doing. So that's great. Thanks for tuning in. It's really great to see you here. Uh, elevator fan, you could still slide on ice even if you are in four wheel drive because ice is ice. Yes, and this is the common misperception is lots of people think that they get going, they have lots of traction, they're in four-wheel drive, they have uh, all-wheel drive, those types of things, uh, then they're going to be fine. But the bottom line is, is you still have to be able to get the vehicle stopped. So that's what you need to be doing. Uh, going at a slow enough speed and keeping enough distance around your vehicle that you can in fact get it stopped. Uh, Klaus, by the way, I don't have to worry about the 15 degree weather here in uh, Rosenheim County. Your camera was moving. Uh, same gray cloudy weather here. Yes, the camera is moving. I'm trying to use my iPhone. I have a new iPhone and it hooks right into my computer. But of course, Apple in its great wisdom didn't give you zoom and pan controls on the camera. No, they just give you this software that is supposed to center you in in the camera. I don't like it. So I'm going to go back to what I was doing before and working that way. But anyway, it so it moves around a little bit because it tries to keep me in the center of the frame, but it's not, it's not doing what I want it to do. So we're going to try something different. Uh, Mallory tuned in here. Hello, Mallory. Uh, Lightning, I've been all, doing all right. I'm surprised you remember me. And how have you been? Uh, we've been great, Lightning. Uh, we just got back from Australia a couple weeks ago and uh, had a great time there. Uh, you know, good holidays in the summer, you know. We're still here, we're still doing YouTube videos and uh, we're moving forward. So life is life is really great, awesome. Uh, Ant, uh, one of my colleagues last year told me to start in second gear in winter driving conditions, it helped. Uh, Ant, are you driving a manual transmission? Because if you're ma driving a manual transmission and you're in slippery conditions, then yes, indeed, uh, that is going to help you out here. Uh, so let's get over to the slideshow presentation here and we'll go through that and then we'll come back and we'll answer any questions you have about passing a driver's test, starting a career as a truck or a bus driver or becoming a safer, smarter driver. So let's do that. Uh, your car's maintenance, look after your ride, it'll look after you. Now the bottom line is with most cars, you know, if you're driving anything newer than 2010 and you look after it and you do regular maintenance on your vehicle, your probably not going to have to do a whole lot of it to get it ready for winter. The uh, radiator fluid is going to be fine. Uh, all the other levels are going to be topped up. That's the great thing about newer vehicles and automotive technology is, is that these things 
you know, as long as you keep the oil changed in, you do the regular maintenance and whatnot, these vehicles will run out 200, 300,000 kilometers, you know, 150, 200,000 miles on them without too much problem at all. And uh, one of the other pieces is keeping the oil changed, okay? Minimum every 5,000 miles, even if you're using th synthetic oil in them. And I've talked to so many engine rebuilders, uh, especially with the old buggy. Uh, the old buggy now, I change the oil in it at 2,500 miles every 4,000 kilometers. Uh, so if you're doing that, the vehicle is going to look after you. Yeah, and I messed that up. There we go. They've changed the controls on this, and I really don't like it. <laughs> my software for broadcasting. For those of you new to Smart Drive Test, my name is Rick August. I was a truck driver during the 1990s. I uh, became a licensed commercial driving instructor in 1997. Uh, graduated from the University of Melbourne with my doctor in legal history in 2006. And yes, uh, we did visit the University of Melbourne. We kind of did a quick walkthrough with my kids. Uh, they weren't too interested in the University of Melbourne. So then we went down to Ligon Street and had something to eat. Uh, well, I was going to university in Australia. I drove buses for Greyhound in one of the regional bus lines. And so I have experience with coaches as well. And in 2015, uh, almost eight years ago now, I started the online YouTube channel and the business. And it has been wildly more successful than I could have imagined. So check that out over at the Smart Drive Test website. And new videos last week, a couple of new shorts I got up, driving test myths. Um, one of the myths about driving tests is, is that there's different states, different laws, different rules. Uh, yes, there are, but every driving test at every DMV is going to be different. It, if you know one person after another, even if you get the same examiner, it's going to be a different driving test than the person before them had because traffic is dynamic. So have a look at that short as well. Uh, do you have to stop at a yield sign? Should I stop at a yield sign? No, you shouldn't. If the way is clear and you can proceed, simply slow down, check the cross traffic and proceed. So have a look at those two shorts and that'll give you some more information about your driver's test. Uh, first thing you need to look at is your oil. Make sure that you check all the fluid levels under the hood of your vehicle, uh, getting preparation for winter time. Uh, oil, the power steering fluid, the brake fluid, the brake fluid will be in the master cylinder, which is right in front of the steering wheel under the hood. Uh, it's there because it's attached to the brake pedal. Uh, so check the brake fluid in it as well. Engine oil, if you have an automatic transmission, check the automatic transmission. And if you're unsure of any of these and you want to know how to do it, go to the owner's manual of your vehicle and it will show you how to check all the fluid levels in your vehicle. All right, uh, tire rotation should be every two oil changes, which is about 8,000 miles or 10,000 kilometers for those of us in Canada and other parts of the world. Check your tires, make sure that they're not down to the wear bars. Uh, make sure that you have good tread on them. If they are getting down to the wear bars, you do want to change your tires out, especially for winter tires uh, in driving around on snow and ice and making sure that you have optimum traction. Uh, if you have a look at um, uh, Gavin's driving lessons that I did with him a couple of years ago, he was using his aunt's vehicle and there were fairly bald tires on that vehicle but because it was all wheel drive there was still pretty decent traction but the first day we went out in the rain and slush uh, and snow uh, we were slipping and sliding around a little bit because it did need new tires on the vehicle. Uh, filters, you want to check the engine air filter every eight to 15,000 kilometers. Now you can use paper ones and replace those and they're about twenty dollars to um, change the engine air filter. Uh, engine fuel filter, you'll probably need to take this into a technician. It should be changed every 10 to 15,000 miles. Uh, the air cabin um, K&N filters, this is something else you can use. Reusable filters on your vehicle and maybe I'll do a video about this as well. Uh, about recyclable filters. Uh, the cabin filter, this is actually a picture of the cabin filter that I pulled out of the buggy a couple of years ago. <laughs> I was wondering why the defrost wasn't working in it, and then I pulled the filter out and realized that you know maybe maybe three years was too long for the cabin filter. So know that you need to change the cabin filter because this is what it can look like, and uh, this is the air that you're breathing that it's pushing it through this filter, so it can get pretty dirty. Uh, the filter uh, after you change the cabin filter, one of the things I always do is I uh, recommend you put an aerosol bomb in your vehicle. Uh, it's not a bomb that blows up your vehicle; it's actually a bomb 
that uh, it's got a dead switch on it and you empty the contents of it while the vehicle's running with the air conditioning on and it will actually pull this sanitizing aerosol through all of the ducting in the dash and uh, it kind of sanitizes the inside of your vehicle. Now, usually what I do at the same time is, is that I let off an aerosol bomb and change the cabin filter. I usually take my car in and get it detailed at a shop and uh, spend the money, get them to shampoo all the carpets in it and completely clean the vehicle out. And then I change the cabin filter and I will do an aerosol bomb in it as well. Now, it can be a little pricey to get your detailing done depending on where you take it. It's gonna be a couple hundred to $400 to get your inside of your vehicle done. But let me tell you, these people do an incredible job on cleaning the inside of your vehicle. Now, I wouldn't suggest going into winter that you get that done right now but i would wait till spring and get it done in the spring and then you can have this vehicle that's almost brand new all right uh if you're driving a vehicle with an automatic transmission 50 to 80 000 kilometers you're going to have to change the filter in the automatic transmission uh to keep that running properly all right fluid levels transmission fluids differential fluids and radiator fluids and any of these that are going to be changed uh, coming into winter or any other time, uh, I would definitely, unless you're really handy and really know how to uh, get your way around a vehicle and turn wrenches and those types of things, I would suggest that you take it into an automotive technician and get them to change these fluids in your vehicle according to the owner's manual. Again, have a look at your owner's manual in your for your vehicle and it will show you how to change all of these things. Uh, belts, brakes, and batteries. Uh, timing belts usually need to be done every 100,000 Ks. Now, a lot of the newer vehicles are not going to have timing belts. <clears throat> the buggy, my 1998 Honda CRV, does in fact have a timing belt, and every 100,000 miles I have to get that changed out. And depending on the shop where you're going to go, you're looking at about $1,000 to get that changed out. Uh, brakes are going to be 50 to 75,000 miles. Uh, depending on the driver, depending on the kind of use you're using, you know, if you're pulling a trailer and you're going up and down through the mountains, the brakes are going to be changed a lot more regularly than other people uh, just using their vehicle for running around town and those types of things. Okay, batteries every five to ten years, and most people, if you're any driver, you're just going to wait until it dies and then you're going to replace it. <laughs> you're not going to do regular maintenance on your battery. All right. Uh, suspension and tires, this is going to vary, but you're going to have to change shocks on your vehicle every 50 to 75,000 miles. Uh, tire quality, again, it's going to de depend. It's going to be kind of 30 to 80,000 miles on a set of tires, depending on what kind of use you have, how hard you drive your vehicle and whatnot. You know, if you're carrying a lot of excess weight and whatnot, uh, if you have an, ex uh, an electric vehicle, you're going to change your tires a lot more regularly than you will on an ICE vehicle, an internal combustion engine, because electric vehicles are a lot heavier. They're on average 40% heavier than their uh, ICE counterparts. And because they're heavier and because they have increased torque, uh, they will go through a set of tires anywhere from 20 to 40,000 miles on an electric vehicle. This is definitely one of the downfalls of an electric vehicle is how much wear they go through on tires. Uh, spark plugs, again, this is something you're going to need an automotive technician, 12 to 15,000 miles on a set of uh, spark plugs. Uh, wires, you know, you're going to get quite a bit out of those, probably 50,000 miles, and then rotors and caps. This is going to be on older vehicles uh, and newer vehicles as well. You're going to need rotors and caps. And again, this is something that you're going to have to go into an automotive technician. But again, if you keep on top of all of this stuff and you regularly maintain your vehicle, you're only going to have to you're going to have to do a minimal amount of work to get your vehicle ready for winter time. Uh, troubling, troubleshooting, uh, some of the things you can do. Uh, thermostat, if you're not getting heat out of your vehicle, it could very much be the thermostat in your vehicle. What a thermostat does is it keeps the cooling system a closed loop until the vehicle heats up to whatever its operating temperature is, 170 degrees Fahrenheit, 180 degrees Fahrenheit whatever the manufacturer sets the engine at for the operating temperature until the engine heats up to that degree the thermostat will not open the cooling system and run the system as an open loop through the uh, chambers in the engine so if you're not getting heat the reason you're not getting heat is because the thermostat is not closing and not closing that loop and allowing the engine to heat up particularly when you get into 
uh, colder and colder temperatures. Uh, three years ago, uh, Tracy and I went to Calgary in the middle of, uh, on Boxing Day, actually, and it was minus 35 degrees Celsius, which is almost minus 35 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, I should have taken some cardboard with me and put it down in front of the radiator because it took a very long time for the buggy to heat up. <laughs> so know that. Okay, fuel injector cleaner. Uh, if your car is running a little rough, uh, one of the things they can suggest is that every six months you put some of this fuel injector cleaner in it to clean the uh, fuel injectors. Uh, air conditioning, again, the internal, uh, the uh, cabin filter, make sure you're changing that. Uh, the defrost isn't working as I showed you a picture of that. This was because I didn't change the cabin filter in the buggy for three years. And fuses, if something isn't working, you have a set of fuses in your vehicle. And again, this information will be in your owner's manual. So if you have your stereos not working for some reason, then, uh, you know, potentially just look at the fuses and see if one is blown. All right. Lights and tires inspection once a month. Inspect your vehicle. Make sure all your lights are working. Make sure that your brake lights are working. Inspect your tires. Have a look at them and uh, look at the wear bars and make sure that the tread isn't down to the wear bars. So good luck in your driver's test. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. All right. Uh, Rawson, I would have winter tires or still use all season tires, have my windshield wipers replaced and have my windshield washer fluid topped up. Yes, and that's another piece that I didn't touch on. Thank you for reminding me, Rawson, is, is that winter washer fluid. Make sure that you put the minus 40 degrees Celsius, minus 40 degree Fahrenheit windshield washer fluid in your vehicle for the winter time because if you have, still have summer winter, wish, windshield washer fluid or it's water, it freezes and because water expands when it freezes that plastic reservoir in your car the ice will expand and it will break that reservoir and it could be a costly expense to replace that reservoir in your vehicle to get your windshield washer fluid changed out so make sure that you change out and are using that minus 40 uh, degrees windshield wa washer fluid one of the things i do i just never use summer washer fluid in my vehicle i don't use it very often so uh, I just keep putting uh, winter washer fluid in it, and then I never really have to worry about it in the winter time. All right. Uh, Lightning, kids are doing awesome. Uh, Scout went to high school this year, and, uh, you know, she's having fun. Bit of a transition for her, but she is in high school this year, so it's really great. Uh, awesome. <laughs> Lightning, no, you showed up a lot, and, you know, I remember... Uh, you tuning in from South Africa, and also you're an engineer, so you know, and you drive a Mercedes. Are you still driving your Mercedes, or do you have something else? Awesome. Uh, retired. Uh, where's the best place to buy tires at a reasonable price? Uh, retired. One of the best places to drive tires. Now, remind me where you are again. I think you're on Vancouver Island. Is that correct? One of the best places, actually, that I have been told to buy tires is at Costco or at Walmart. Those are the two places to uh, for the best kind of deal you can get on tires. Uh, why, but the experience of doing all the repairs is being priceless. <laughs> Watching this makes me feel a little uneasy because of how many problems the Jeep has or had. Uh, yeah, sometimes you get a vehicle that needs a lot of work on it. And through the time that I've owned the buggy, which is probably about the same time that I've been operating the YouTube channel, uh, there's been a few times or three years ago there I put a lot of money into the into the buggy there It just seemed every time I turned around there was something else that needed to be fixed And that was the same year that I got the rust fixed on it as well Okay, uh, okay re retired my apologies. You're in North Carolina, North Carolina. What's in North Carolina? Walmart is probably the best place to get tires for your car, believe it or not. And uh, from there, I would look there, and then I would go elsewhere and see uh, see what else you get. Okay. Awesome. You got a new vehicle. Brilliant. <laughs> well deserved, I'm sure, in terms of having a new Mercedes. Awesome. And your your whole family, your sister and your mom and everybody else, all have uh, Mercedes and whatnot there in. Uh, where you live in South Africa, right? Is that Am I remembering that correctly? Uh, Wyatt, we have Walmarts here. Yes, and that is a good place uh, to go and buy tires, believe it or not. You can get the same kind of high-end uh, 
Okay, so retired, you have both Walmart and Costco. Those are the two places that I would go and look uh, for tires. Uh, they'll put them on, they'll mount them, they'll do all those things that everybody else does. Uh, and uh, Sam's Club there, Wyatt is saying as well, uh, is a possibility for getting tires. So those places are all good tires. And I know are good places to buy tires at that are relatively inexpensive. And I know that some of these places you can get tires probably in the 80 to $100 range uh, for kind of like a mid-size vehicle, like, you know, a Honda CRV or whatnot. So, you know, decent tires for sure. And I'm a big believer in tires and windshield wipers. Uh, those two things are something that you need to have new on your vehicle, especially going into wintertime. I just, I don't like not having good tires on my vehicle. Uh, I'm a huge believer in them. And uh, talking about windshield wipers, uh, Corey put the video up on Trico windshield wipers. Those Trico windshield wipers that I did the video on four years ago now, I don't know what the date is on the video. I can't remember. Those Trico windshield wipers are still on the buggy. I haven't replaced them since I put them on there. So if you're looking for good quality windshield wipers, Trico wipers are excellent uh, windshield wipers at least in my experience, and uh, I'm not being sponsored by Trico. Uh, I just like good quality stuff that I'm not replacing all the time. All right, uh, Corey says, I'm also having issues with my defrost, uh, getting the heat going. Uh, sounds like a cabin filter replacement is a relatively easy fix, hoping that's my issue. Uh, yeah, Corey, if you're not getting a lot of heat or defrost out of it, start with the cabin filter. That's not going to be... So the cabin filter is going to restrict airflow, okay? If the filter is completely plugged up, you're not going to get air moving through the heating system on your vehicle. If you're not getting heat, that's probably a thermostat issue, okay? Thermostats are relatively easy to fix if you're fairly handy. Uh, it's basically just the radiator hose. You need a pail underneath the engine to catch the radiator fluid that comes out. Uh, it's a couple of bolts, you pull the thing out, you put the new one in, you put the gasket on, you put the two bolts back on, uh, and then you have to refill the radiator again when the engine's running. So it's not really that hard to change the thermostat. Now, if you've got a new, newer vehicle, I might take it into a technician, get them to do it or not, those types of things. But I have done them before, not a huge deal, okay? Uh, Lightning, only my mother has, to, has one. Everyone else is riding cheap right now. <laughs> Everyone else is riding cheap. I love that. That's awesome. Uh, okay. Elevator says there is a Walmart in Monticello, Indiana. So that's another place. So Walmart is more or less North American wide. So you can look there for inexpensive tires for your vehicle, especially if you're looking for replacement tires going into winter time uh, to be put on your uh, vehicle and those types of things. Uh, and uh, I do strongly encourage you to do that because ice and snow is coming for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> you know, especially if you're north of the Mason-Dixon line, uh, you're going to be in the ice and snow in the winter time. Uh, Stavey, hi Rick, good evening. I just got my studded winter tires, the windshield wiper washer fluid. I watched your video today on it. Uh, please do I need to lubricate the door seals with WD-40. Uh, Stabby, you can lubricate the door seals with WD-40. Uh, WD-40 may or may not be your best, uh, you know, product to lubricate the the seals on your doors. Uh, if you go to an auto shop, they might be able to recommend something else. But WD-40 will work. Uh, WD-40 has been recommended to me. The rubber seals and vinyl on your vehicle breaks down because of ultraviolet radiation, right? WD-40, it was recommended to me for the um, vinyl, especially my tire cover, my spare tire cover on the buggy, that every time I wash the vehicle to just take a bit of WD-40 and put it on a rag and then wipe it on to the uh, vinyl uh, tire cover and that will protect it from the ultraviolet rays and those types of things so yes that is definitely something that you could do an automotive shop or an auto, auto parts shop rather might be able to recommend something better than wd-40 but i find you know wd-40 is fairly uh, it has a it has a universal application it's really good stuff and it repels water right 
But, um, yeah, that's all of that. Uh, Corey, thanks, Rick. I will look into the cabin filter and thermostat. Awesome. Yeah, if you're not getting heat out of your car, it's, it's one of those two things. So the cabin filter is airflow and the thermostat is the actual heat coming out of the vehicle because what happens is, is that generally when thermostats fail, they don't stay closed, they stay open. And when they stay open, the water in your car is circulating all the time. And so the water never, or the, the vehicle never has a chance, to, the engine actually never has a chance to heat up and it will, won't heat up and you won't get heat inside the cabin of your vehicle. When it's working properly, it will keep that a closed system so that it heats up the water in the engine jackets and those types of things, and then you can actually get heat into the cabin of your vehicle. All right. Uh, Ross, and electric car batteries are very heavy. Uh, Ross, and you are absolutely right. As I was saying, uh, electric cars are 40% heavier than their ICE counterparts. And see, that didn't really work out for the electric, <laughs> the electric car industry when they labeled internal combustion engines ice because <laughs> ice is just too cool i have an ice car that just that just sounds too cool right it sounds like you're uh frozone from Miss the incredibles or something <laughs> so it didn't really work out for them in terms of marketing but electric vehicles yes indeed are 40 percent heavier than their ice counterparts so for example the ford f-150 the ford f-150 lightning is almost 6,500 pounds, where it's its counterpart is 4,000 pounds. Because they're heavier, because they have greater acceleration off the line and they're meant for bombing around the city, people who drive these things tend to use that torque and it really chews through the tires because of the excess weight and the excess torque or the increased amount of torque and increased amount of weight, it chews through tires. So unfortunately, you're only going to get 20 to 40,000 miles on a set of tires on an electric vehicle. Mallory says it's getting colder at night here in the Maritimes. Last night, the temperature dropped to minus one overnight. So Mallory, it's cold there, but it's still not as cold as it is in Calgary, Alberta. <laughs> Calgary, Alberta was minus 11 degrees Celsius this morning. So they're really cold. Uh, they're really rugging up, as the Australians like to say. Uh, elevator fan, it will be easier to take your driver's test in the wintertime. Yes, it will. And the reason that I say that for taking your driver's test in the wintertime, you're going to have a higher skill set. Driving examiners are relaxed. The test is less exact in the wintertime. You don't have to parallel park between the... Uh, you know, eight to 12 inches from the curb. You just have to park in behind the vehicle in front of you. Uh, when you stall park, uh, you just have to get in beside side the car beside you. You don't have to get in between the lines. Of course, this is when roads are snow covered, right? You come up to the, the intersection. Uh, you don't have to stop at the correct stopping position. You just stop before the sidewalk, give way to all the road users, and then proceed when the way is clear. So the test is less exact in the winter time. Driving examiners are less stressed. And if you're in a place where it's tough to get a driver's license, uh, New York City, Minnesota, Minneapolis, uh, Chicago, you're more likely to get a driver's test in the winter time. The other piece about driving in the winter time, all the goofy people stay home. There are less pedestrians, less vulnerable road users that you need to deal with in the winter time. So you manage space well around your vehicle, brake early, creep up to where you actually want to stop. Yes, indeed, your driver's test is going to be easier in the winter time. Uh, Ross, my mom has a Mustang GT Mach E electric SUV. Oh yeah, one of those things. I've seen them. <laughs> They're not pretty. <laughs> They're not pretty. <laughs> uh, Rob, driving is, you've changed your name again, my friend. <laughs> But you're here. Uh, can't wait for the snow to fly. <laughs> Isn't the snow flying already in Sudbury, my friend? Okay, uh, you need to come out to Calgary, Rob, as I was just saying. It was minus 11. There were six inches of snow on the on the ground this morning in Calgary, Alberta. Uh, Klaus, just a joke. I think your Honda will not be there in spring 2024 because of ice, you know. <laughs> because of ice. <laughs> the buggy will still be there. The buggy will live forever forever the buggy will live yes uh uh Wyatt says it might be a clogged heater core too if your coolant's dirty yes uh Wyatt that's another 
Uh, once you start going down things that you're going to troubleshoot in terms of those things that could potentially be wrong, yes, uh, start with the easy stuff, fil cabin filter, start with the thermostat, and then as Wyatt says, the, uh, the heater core, so there's a heater core inside, so where they plumb the hot water from the engine coolant through the dash uh, and transfer that heat into the cabin, that could be clogged and could be rusted up and you could have to change that out as well. That gets into much more expensive repairs, unfortunately, and you definitely need an automotive technician to fix those kinds of problems. Uh, Rob, I had to change my uh, channel name because some dude stole my Nickel City driving name and used it for his driving school business name. Oh my God. So they just took it and then they didn't say thank you. They just... Oh my God, I'm sorry Sorry to hear about that, my friend. Uh, Ross, and in the winter, my mom will drive her Jeep Wrangler because it can handle the snow with no issue. Uh, the interesting part about <laughs> Ross and is, is that that may be a misconception. Your mom might actually find that the, bus, the Mustang works better in the winter time. Uh, when I bought the buggy, the, the person that I bought it from had a Jeep. And they said to me that the Honda, the 1988 Honda CRV, actually performed better in the winter time than the Jeep did. So, <laughs> so she might she might actually go back to driving the the Mustang as opposed to driving the Jeep in the winter time. Uh, Rocky, the Spider-Man Cup, uh, yes. And I wasn't saying anything a couple of years ago, but it looks awesome anyway. Yeah, we still have the Spider-Man Cup here. Uh, there it is. Every every live stream. Uh, Nelmic, do I have Hall Halloween plans? Yeah, I'm going to hand out candy. Uh, I don't really know what I'm dressing up is yet. I'm sure there's something here that I can dress up as. Uh, the kids are going out and whatnot, so all good. Uh, Rob, yep, my uh, traffic is going to this other dude, but I don't really care because I'm booked solid into January. Well, that's really good, Rob, to hear that you're booked for three months out. Awesome, awesome. I'm sure there's lots of people who were still back. You're still dealing with backup with um, the pandemic and the shutdown and those types of things there in Ontario. Question for you, Rob. Is Ontario still not doing slow speed maneuvers for the G test uh, for the kids there? Because I was talking to somebody last week who was taking their G license and uh, I didn't know I was saying that Parallel parking and other slow speed maneuvers weren't a requirement for the G-Test. Is that still what they're doing there in Ontario to try and catch up with the backlog? Uh, elevator fan, if you slide through a red light or stop sign, you will fail your driver's test. Yes, you will. <laughs> yes, you will. Uh, Eric says, uh, seafoam motor treatment, one can per tank of gas, cleans out the carbon and partial can of oil, half, other half in the gas. Okay, excellent. And you have used that, Eric, and you recommend that. That works really well for the um, um, cleans out the carbon and partial can of oil for the other half and the gas. Okay, not sure what that last bit is. It doesn't, but definitely read the instructions when you get it and put it through your vehicle. So that's something that works out. All right, and um, Ross, and have I ever been in a Nissan Rogue? Yes, I did. The vehicle that I rented on Vancouver Island was a Nissan Rogue, and I didn't like it. I didn't like it. And not because I didn't like the car. I did like the car. The problem that I have with vehicles is that <coughs> these newer vehicles, especially the renter ve rental vehicles, they put these little tiny four-cylinder engines in them that are like a 1.8 engine, one-point liter engine, and they put an automatic transmission behind it, which is as useless as screen doors in a submarine. All right? It doesn't work. It was the same thing with the Cupra that we had in Australia. They've got these little tiny four-cylinder engines in them, and they put an automatic transmission behind them. If they put a manual transmission, if you want to put a small engine in it, that's fine. But put a transmission in it that I can wind the sucker out to get it going, okay? I have 125 horsepower in the buggy. It's got a manual transmission behind it. If I need to get going, I can just leave it in second gear and I can walk on it and get the thing up to speed and get it going. 
I cannot do that with an automatic transmission. Well, of course you can, but it gives the little hamsters on, you know, on the wheel under the hood there, it gives them a little heart attack when you step down on the throttle and you're like, let's go now. And the lamps are like, and they're running on the wheel, right? <laughs> so stop making little four cylinder engines in a car with an automatic transmission in it. There should be, there should be a law. That if it is less than two liters, if it is less than 150 horsepower, it has to have a manual transmission in it. But of course, that's never going to fly. But that's, you know, if I were in charge, that's what I would say. If it's a small four-cylinder, less than two liters, and it puts out less than 150 horsepower, and whatever torque it needs, it has to have a manual transmission behind it. It cannot. The law, no automatic transmission behind a little engine okay because the only thing that saves a little four-cylinder engine is that it's got a manual transmission behind it so that would be my new rule uh corey probably not a big fan of these newer cbt's transmissions i've heard they're rather slow uh, they're terrible they're terrible corey i've rented a couple of vehicles with them and i really don't like them at all Stabby, I like the new Kia lineups. Uh, Rick, awesome. That's great. And, you know, that's the thing about cars. There's lots of them out there. And never settle when you're buying a car. Buy the car that you want. If you want a blue car, buy a blue car. If you want a Kia, buy a Kia. Okay? Buy what you want because there are so many vehicles out there. You can get the vehicle that you want for sure. Okay, Rob says, uh, no slow speed maneuvers to get a full G here in Ontario. They only test you on driving along in uh, traffic, speed mani speed management, space management, highway lane changes. Okay. So they're still doing that. So the bureaucrats trying to teach people how to drive. When in reality, Rob, my thinking on that when they announced that was is that they should have not been going out on a drive. They should have just put them in a course and made them do the parallel parking and the slow speed maneuvers, uh, the three point turns, backing into a parking space and those types of things because that's the real indicator as you and I know as to whether somebody can drive. Any monkey can sit in a vehicle and point it down the road. Uh, really being able to drive is the ability to be able to do all of those slow speed maneuvers. Uh, close, I have automatically four by four drive in my Skoda. Uh, winter, no problem. I love driving home from work last year in December. Just uh, snow on the road. Yes, and that's awesome. You've got that automatic 4x4. And that's the other piece about it. You know, lots of people are terrified uh, about driving in the winter time. Uh, but vehicles have great traction. As I was saying, if you look at Gavin's driving lessons, uh, the vehicle had... You know, tires that were not very good on it, but it still had good traction because it was all-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, or four-wheel drive. All, you know, it's about every vehicle now in this day and age is one of those three types of, uh, you know, drivetrains in them. So you're going to have, you're going to have good traction in the winter time. It's not going to be a question of traction. What it is, it's a, it's a question of braking because you got to get the vehicle stopped, right? So... Good space management, braking early, and creeping up to the intersection because the intersection in the wintertime is where it's going to be slippery because what happens is the cars come up and they brake and they slide and they brake and they slide. And when you get tires locked up on the ice and snow, they heat it up a little bit and they melt it and you get a layer of water on top of the ice and snow and the, the layer of water is what makes the ice slippery. Think of it like... An ice hockey rink. Ice is most slippery after the Zamboni goes out and floods the ice. Because it leaves a layer of water on top of the ice. And that's what lubricates the ice and makes it slippery. So know that when you're driving. Uh, Mallory, what is a G license? Oh, in the province of Ontario, Mallory, a G license is a car license. It's just your first license for getting a car. They went with the alphabet uh, in the province of Ontario. So it's a G license. And then they have everything from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and an M. <laughs> A is tractor trailer, B is school bus, D is uh, uh, truck, straight truck, uh, E, F, ambulances, uh, buses, 25, less than 25. You don't need to know all that. <laughs> anyway, so you, you want to be in my head. This is the trivial information that I have in my head, which is not very interesting. 
Okay, uh, Rob says he loves driving on ice, but Rob lives in Sudbury, which is in northern Ontario. Not like northern, northern Ontario, because there's two Norse, northern Ontarios, right? There's northern Ontario up to North Bay, right? From Toronto to North Bay, there's like northern Ontario. And then there's deep northern Ontario, where you're like north of North Bay, and you're like in wilderness. It's kind of like British Columbia. Once you get past... Prince George in British Columbia, it's deep north British Columbia. It's the same thing as Ontario. Anything north of North Bay in Ontario is deep north Ontario, okay? You are in the wilderness. It's kind of like uh, being in Duluth, Minnesota. You are in the deep north. Or it's like being a youper, right? <laughs> in Michigan, once you get up <laughs> past... The bridge, <laughs> you know, you are deep north. Uh, Stabby, we have two lane roundabouts in Fredericton, New Brunswick, uh, and I've noticed people don't know how to use them. Yes, North Americans don't know how to use roundabouts, period. I mean, some people do, but for the most part, they don't because we just don't have them, uh, very many of them, and, uh, you know, recently they've reintroduced them into the driving landscape. All right. Uh, Epic and rental vehicles, they will also use a dual clutch transmission example of one is a Hyundai Kona. For those types of cars, they have a tendency to be slow in acceleration and lurching in low speeds. Oh yeah, I experienced all of that with the Rogue that I had on the island and the Cupra that I had in Australia. Yeah, all of that. All of that. So again, like I said, if I was Supreme Ruler, uh, all vehicles, two liters and less and less than 150 horsepower, it would be manual transmission. Otherwise, you can't make it. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not Supreme Ruler. So, there we go. Uh, excellent. Okay, Klaus, my grandpa had a 1986 Audi. Uh, liter five-cylinder with 136 horsepower, five-gear standard. Yes. <clears throat> awesome. Excellent. All right. So, again, going back to preparing your vehicle for the wintertime, the other thing that you might want to do is you might want to uh, put a coat of wax on your vehicle to protect it from the salt and sand that they put on the roadways because that is really tough on your paint, uh, especially if you're in the province of Ontario and other places where they use really, really heavy salt and other stuff that really corrodes your vehicle. When I go back home to Ontario, uh, one of the things that I don't see are old Honda CRVs. I see heaps and heaps of them out here where I live in British Columbia, but in the province of Ontario, I don't see any of them because they're all rusted out. And whatever they put on the roadways in the wintertime is really hard on cars, okay? But what are, they obviously put something different on the roads out here, whether it's more salt or more sand, as opposed to a lot of salt and other chemicals, uh, defrosting chemicals. Uh, so there are a lot more uh, Honda, old Honda CRVs that are all around that kind of 400,000, 200,000 mile mark. So you might want to put a coat of wax on. Uh, Two years ago, I used to use the liquid wax and put that on the, the buggy. And then I, uh, my brother had, I was home, I was helping him with my mom's car and I was putting a coat of wax on my mom car, mom's car. And he had paste wax, uh, which was, was it Meguiar's? I think it was Meguiar's. It's an actual paste wax and it's actually comes in, it's chunky and you actually got to put it on and, and then you got to buff it in. I found that the paste wax works much, much better uh, for waxing your vehicle than the liquid wax does going on your car. So have a look at that. And it's really not that much harder to put on. Uh, you basically buff it in on an area about two feet by two feet squared. And then you use a buffer, you buff it in, you let it dry, and then you just buff it. And it works awesome. And it the, the longevity on the paste wax is a good year as opposed to the liquid wax which you're probably doing every three years now you can put the spray wax on as well so all of that will help you out definitely okay stabby touches car wash undercarriage wash yes all of that stuff helps as well uh the undercarriage wash i'm not sure whether i would endorse an undercarriage wash uh, because you want all that dirt and crud and old grease under there because all of that prevents rust on the underside of your vehicle. Now, there are sealers that you can get when you buy your vehicle. You can take it into a shop. You can take it into a, uh, a dealership and those types of things. They have all of that stuff. 
The other piece about it is, is that they have these new anti-rust electricity thing that they run through the, this. And I don't know a great deal about it. Maybe somebody else or one of the smart drivers here is no more is about it. But they actually run a, a low current through the vehicle. Excuse me. And that's what prevents it from rusting and corroding. Uh, and this is something else that you can add on as an option if you buy your vehicle from a dealer as well. So that will that might be something you might consider. Uh, Mozart, when do I use double indicators? How do you mean double indicators? I'm not following what you're asking me there. Can you reword that? Uh, Corey, uh, even when they kind of don't know roundabouts, they still find it considerably better than four-way stops. Yes, uh, I... I am a huge fan of roundabouts for those of you who've been on the channel for a period of time. Roundabouts move more traffic per hour. Uh, so they move a larger volume of traffic. They reduce noise, urban noise pollution. Somebody who lived at a two-way stop sign intersection for almost a year, I can tell you that roundabouts are a lot quieter than conventional intersections. As well, they have fewer points of conflict. So where there are fewer crashes uh, at roundabouts as opposed to four-way stop signs. So know all of that uh, when you're driving around and thinking, oh my God, I hate roundabouts. No, I love roundabouts because uh, you go to Australia and in Australia and in Europe, roundabout means speed up, let's go faster. <laughs> as opposed to North America where some people are like, oh my God, we're all going to die. Don't blow. You know, and they close their eyes and drive into it. Don't do that. <laughs> uh Okay, uh, Epic. Uh, here in New Jersey, it's less corrosive form of de-icing salt and sand since my brother's friend has the same exact CRV as you. What I see is that different jurisdictions use different uh, types of de-icing salts. Yes, in fact, they do. And I know for a fact uh, that whatever they use in the province of Ontario is a lot more corrosive than whatever we use out here in the West. And I was talking to somebody who was a plow operator uh, some years ago, and they call it pickle mix. Uh, there's a certain amount of, uh, there's a ratio of sand to salt that they use when they put it on the roadways uh, in the winter time to try and de-ice. Now, here in the in Western Canada where I live, they probably don't put a lot of salt on the roadways because salt only works down to about minus 8 degrees Celsius, only down to about 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Below that, it won't work. So what they probably do is put a lot more sand on the roadways to try and provide traction and grip on the roadways in the winter time. Uh, so you probably get less of that harmful chemical de-icing uh, agent that they put on the roadways uh, than you do in other places where it's not as cold, okay? Uh, Klaus, this car from my grandpa sadly exploded in the auto shop back in 2007. Uh, totaled, of course, it burned in the complete engine room was black and smoke i saw a picture of when i was 15 years old <coughs> did they ever figure out why the car blew up in the shop uh that's that's weird uh rob says uh, pickle mix yeah laughing large grains of salt uh mixed with sand yeah and uh the other thing rob yeah no i laughed too when i heard it called pickle mix i thought that was kind of a funny term so yeah so definitely think about putting a coat of wax on your vehicle. Definitely think about uh, putting uh, an agent WD-40 or whatever product that you can find to lubricate the door seals around and you know keep all of that rubber flexible so that it doesn't get brittle and dry out and corrode over a period of time uh, because you know you need to keep the door seals good on your vehicle because this is what keeps the noise outside of the vehicle keeps you in the cabin keeps you nice and comfortable and keeps the you know inside of the cabin insulated and whatnot uh and uh, we talked about potential problems you could have with your car if you're not getting heat out of it in the winter time the other piece uh that one of the things that they did is because one of the defrosters on the buggy doesn't work as well as it should unfortunately it's the driver's side uh, they actually have cameras now that they can put down into the vents and they can actually see whether the vents are blocked or not. Uh, that's something else that you could potentially uh, do as well. Take it into a shop and get them to put a camera into the vents on your defrost and making sure that they're working well and make sure that there isn't any obstruction or anything that uh, 
uh, got jammed down there like tissue or potato chips or whatever <laughs> else weird things we have in our cars that potentially could have got down into the vents. Uh, the other thing is, is if you did buy your vehicle secondhand or bought it from somebody else, I mean, there could be all kinds of weird things down in there. So, uh, you know, have them camera the vents, uh, make sure that there's no blockage, change the filter, and then if that doesn't work, then you start need to get into the engine and the, um, the heater core and those types of things. Uh, Rob, uh, did you know uh, we're permitted steel studded tires up here in the in the north? No, I didn't know that, Rob. But uh, we have uh, steel studded tires. We're allowed steel studded tires here in British Columbia, and you can definitely hear them when you're walking around town. You can hear people with their steel studded tires on, especially you know right now because uh, it's October and lots of people are freaking out because winter's coming and whatnot. Now, I can understand if you're out on the highway and you're driving on the hard pack all the time, you have steel studded tires on, or you're going up to the ski hill two or three times a week, then yes, definitely have steel studded tires on your vehicle. Uh, leaves, pine needles, peanuts in the vents, yes, all of that good stuff. Um, I'll, t I'll tell you a funny story, but uh, before I do that, uh, be sure you check out Pasture Driver's Test First Time Course Package over at the Smart Drive Test website. Uh, pasture driver says first time defensive driving and the winter driving courses are all included in that package uh, you can pick that up over there for about sixty dollars I think it is right now uh, but uh, stick around have a look keep an eye on it there's always specials going on uh, but right now sixty dollars uh, US you can pick up those three great courses and the winter driving smart courses and in, uh, uh, included in that course package over at the smart drive test website so, funny story, uh, Rob was saying, leaves, pine needles, peanuts, and those types of things in the vents. Uh, years ago, when my daughter was very little, and uh, she, she was, she was, we were having one of those days where she was annoying the living daylights out of me, and uh, so we went to the shop, or we went, yeah, we went to the grocery store, and of course she bought a bag of potato chips, you know, one of those economy bags potato chip bags, you know, five pounds of potato chips. And uh, she's sitting in her car seat in the back of the car on this side, on the passenger side. And she, you know, one of one of my pet peeves when they were kids was is that if they were wanted me to repeat something, you'd be like, what? What? All day, she was like, what? What? And so we had gone to the grocery store. She had this big bag of potato chips and she couldn't get them open so she wanted me to open them and I said something to her and she goes what and it was kind of the the straw that broke the camel's back and I reached back and I grabbed this bag of potato chips and I'm just like ah! and I you know I said something profane of course and of course I didn't realize that she had had part of the potato chip bag open <laughs> And I'm driving down the road, and I grabbed it, I flung it at the front of the car, and uh, the potato chip bag exploded in the car, in the windshield, over the vents. <laughs> so what Rob was just saying about leaves, pine needles, potato chips in the vents of the defrost in the car, that's how they get there. Dad is not having one of his best parenting moments, and the potato chips exploded in the car yes i was vacuuming potato chips out of the defrost for probably two years after that so yes not my greatest parenting moment uh in the car looking after my daughter uh when she's like what <laughs> we have a breaking point <laughs> uh close no i think electric shortcut and going up in flames no one was injured maybe a cigarette from a worker uh there in the state of germany awesome well <laughs> It's unfortunate. Sorry about your your grandpa's car. All right, so definitely check that out. Definitely get your car ready for winter. If you have any questions, leave a comment down in the comment section there. Be sure to like and subscribe the video. Uh, always love having you around. Always love having your feedback. Uh, so if you have any answers to the questions that we ask here on the channel, leave a comment. Help out other smart drivers. And uh, if you have a driver's test in the last couple of weeks and you passed, Congratulations on that. If you have a driver's test coming up in the next week or so, good luck on that. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.